Hello, and welcome to our TED Talk. My name is Brittany Wary, and today I will be taking you through the concept of goal setting. Goal setting in the workforce, goal setting as a leader, and personal goal setting. So there are three different types of goals that we would like to talk about in today's TED Talk. First, there's an outcome goal. An outcome goal is essentially a goal that you'd like to achieve, but you don't know the process in which you need to take to get to that goal. Then there's also the process goal. And the process goal goes hand in hand with an outcome goal, because in a process goal, you both know the outcome that you want to achieve, and you also know the process in which you need to take to get to that goal. And then there's the performance goal. And the performance goal goes hand in hand with both of these other two goals that we've talked about. And it's also a goal that's based on your personal core values and your standards, which will help you achieve the result that you want. So goal setting is important, not just in your personal life, but in the corporate world as well. There are several different reasons why people like to goal set, but there are five that we're gonna discuss because we think that they're the most important. The first one is having a driven mindset. So having a German mindset means that you are goal oriented, you're goal focused, you think long term, you're trying to think of ways in which you can succeed down the road. And having that German mindset and creating goals is a great way to link the two together and to maintain the track that you want to be on. The second one is accountability. When creating goal setting lists, obviously it's very helpful if you write them down, but it also helps you maintain um, your accountability towards the goals that you want to achieve. And so by having goals written down and doing some goal setting, there are little reminders that help you stay on track to what you want to um, have success in later on in life. So the third one is maintaining a process oriented culture. This one is a little bit of a long one. Excuse my handwriting. But maintaining a process-oriented culture means that you're focusing on the process that it takes to get to these goals. And so when you write down your goals in your goal setting diary, your journal, piece of paper, whatever you like to write your goals down on, this process-oriented mindset and process-oriented culture helps you maintain the process and continue to think about the process that it takes to maintain these goals. The fourth one, and we can go over here, is organization. So like accountability and maintaining a process-oriented culture, writing down your goals also helps you stay organized as to what you want to achieve and what you're looking for in terms of having success down the road, in 10 weeks, five weeks, 10 days, whatever it may be. It just helps you stay organized. And the last one, kind of the obvious one, motivation. So when you write down your goals, not only are you staying organized and you're maintaining all these other assets, but motivation is a big key thing because obviously in order to achieve goals, you need to stay motivated to achieve them and to get to the point of having success. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer to achieve certain goals. Sometimes it takes a little bit less time to achieve certain goals. But as long as you're maintaining these goal setting ideals, you're going to have motivation to achieve these goals. Goal setting is not just important in your personal life. It's also important in the corporate business world as well. In the research that our group did prior to doing this TED Talk, we found an article written by David Rolander that discusses the importance of blending an employee's goals with the business's goals and trying to find a middle ground between the two so that the employee can get the most out of their job and the business can get the most out of the employee. In the beginning of the semester, we discussed a lot about the hiring process in class, specifically with core values. Oftentimes, businesses will present core values that they want their employees to uphold. And in contrast, employees oftentimes will have their own core values that they want to employ within the business. So when businesses are going through the hiring process, they're oftentimes looking for candidates who already have similar core values that align with the business's core values because it makes the process a lot easier to get the employee started on what they're trying to do. So this topic of core values relates back to goal setting 
because oftentimes you use your core values to decide what type of goals you'd like to set, both on a personal level and a business level. There are many different ways to goal set, but one specific way that we'd like to look at is called V2MOM. V2MOM stands for vision, values, methods, obstacles, and measures. So let's break down V2MOM into its five parts. The first part is vision. So what exactly is a vision? Well, a vision is often considered a long-term goal that you want to achieve. So this could be something, you know, in the business world where you say, hey, I want to make a six-figure salary by the end of the next fiscal year. And this is a long-term goal that you want to achieve, but there's a process that goes along with it to achieve this goal. The second step is values. So this is when you look at your personal values, so your core values, for example, what you value the most, whether that be your family, your friends, your education, your health, your employment, whatever it may be, you have to look at your values and see how they align with what your vision is and how those values can help you achieve your vision. So the third step is methods. Methods are essentially little sets of goals that you create for yourself that help you achieve the overall vision. So going back to this example of the six-figure salary, the methods that we can discuss to get to the six-figure salary could be things like earning a promotion, meeting your quota, um, different things like that that you have to kind of check boxes in order to get to this overall vision. The fourth step is obstacles. Now obstacles is pretty self-explanatory. They're basically the things that you have to overcome to achieve your vision and your long-term goal. So the fifth and final step is measures. Measures are essentially goals that you set along the way to get to this vision, but they're specific goals with specific numbers or percentages that you want to achieve. So going back to this example once again of the six-figure salary, this could be um, setting a goal that says, I want to achieve 100% of my quota by the end of the fiscal year. And that would help you achieve the overall vision of getting promoted and getting that six-figure salary. So in order to explain B2 Mom a little bit better, I'm gonna share a personal anecdote with you guys that goes through the five steps. Since I was born, I have always idolized the University of Washington. My dad, my uncle, and aunt all attended the UW. And so for me growing up, I was always a huge Husky fan. When I was 11 years old in the year of 2009, I got the awesome opportunity to be the Batgirl for the University of Washington softball team. This opportunity that I was granted helped me formulate my vision and my long-term goal of playing softball at the University of Washington. So then looking at my personal values and the core values that I hold near and dear to my heart, they're family, friends, faith, education, health, and career. So I had to take a step back from my vision and look at how these values that I've just listed correlate with the vision that I want to achieve. So taking a look at methods, there were certain things that I had to do in order to set myself apart and achieve this vision of playing softball at the UW. First and foremost, I had to practice a lot. I didn't have a lot of social activities going on in high school because I was either constantly taking ground balls, hitting front toss, playing catch with my dad, going to strength and conditioning classes because I wanted to be the best possible softball player I could be in order to put myself in the best position to be noticed by UW and to be able to have the ability and the skill set and the confidence to play at the UW. By no means was any of this at all easy. There were a lot of obstacles that I had to overcome in order to achieve this vision. For starters, I wasn't necessarily on the best club ball team, and so that kind of hurt my chances of getting noticed by the UW coaches. I also wasn't necessarily the fastest runner, I wasn't the strongest hitter, and I wasn't the best second baseman in my high school class. However, I worked hard to put myself into those positions to be better than where I was previously. But in addition to these athletic obstacles that I had to overcome, there were also monetary obstacles that I had to overcome. A lot of girls in my graduating high school class were starting to commit to college softball programs in eighth grade. 
which is absolutely ridiculous. So when they were committing so early, they were also starting to take away these scholarship funds that are allocated for the graduating class of 2015. And so I was a sophomore in high school, unsure of whether or not I was going to get some sort of scholarship aid from the University of Washington softball program because so many girls had already started committing. So last but not least, in order to hold myself accountable to achieving this overall vision of playing softball for the University of Washington, I had to create measurable goals that I could achieve along the way. A couple of those goals were making all league in high school, setting high school records, um, trying to maintain my batting average at a certain place, trying to look at my fielding percentage and committing less errors. There were measurable goals like those that I created to help me get better as a player, to stay on track, to be the best that I can be, and, but to overall help me have the chance to wear the purple and gold. This V2 mom process can be elaborated in a bunch of different ways. However, this article that we came across by Junis Kaminki really elaborated on how V2 mom can be used in the corporate world. Goal setting is a great way for people to take a step back, look at where they at currently, and then think about where they wanna be down the road. And so I really appreciate goal setting because now that I've removed myself from my softball career and I've immersed myself into a career path of college athletics administration, it's really helped me look at where I am now in my graduate program and where I wanna be in 40 years. So thank you for coming to my TED Talk.